looking at the quotient of powers or the quotient rule. This is where we are dividing powers with the same base. We keep the base the same and we subtract the exponents. So the base needs to be the same and then we subtract the exponents. Again, we just can call this the quotient rule. If you start to get the rules mixed up in your mind, it's always useful to go ahead and write the expression in expanded form. So three to the fifth is three times three times three times three times three over or divided by three squared is divided by three times three. When we cross out our common factors, three divided by three, that one factor pair is one. And here's another one, 3 divided by 3, which just simplifies to 1. That gives me 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the third power. The value of 3 to the third power is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. Again, I could just apply the rule here. They have the same base of 3, so I subtract the exponents, 5 minus 2. But to keep in your mind why that works, you could go ahead and write it in expanded form, seeing that we subtract... 2 from 5 because we have two pairs in the numerator and the denominator of that common factor. So if you wanted to, you could show the work here. 9 to the 7th divided by 9 to the 3rd is 9 to the 7 minus 3, or 9 to the 4th power. Again, we'll, we're visualizing 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9, maybe one more 9, divided by 9 times 9 times 9, crossing out three of those numerator denominator factor pairs, leaving us with nine to the fourth power. We do not require this work, so you could go ahead and just write m to the subtraction 15 minus four, m to the 11th. Again, same basis is absolutely required in order to be able to cross out those factor pairs. So if, for example, we have w to the sixth divided by u to the fourth, simplified form is nothing to the second power, it's just w to the sixth, u to the fourth. Something students often struggle with is where to put the coefficient. If the coefficient is in the numerator to start with, no coefficient in the denominator, this is just going to be 9 quotient rule y to the fourth. So this is not 9y times 9y times 9y times 9y, etc. This is just 9 times y times y times y times y times y times y. So 9y to the fourth. In this case, this is the most common mistake. We are going to apply the quotient rule, so we have g to the fifth, but that six just stays in the denominator. So g to the fifth divided by six. It does not somehow become six g to the fifth. An alternative way to write this is one sixth as a coefficient multiplied by g to the fifth. That looks a little weird. One sixth g to the fifth, so multiplying one-sixth as a coefficient. Usually this one, though, is the one students are more comfortable with. When we are faced with a coefficient in the numerator and the denominator, usually this case students are comfortable with, they just do 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then quotient rule, p to the fifth. The problem is students normally just divide the bigger number by the smaller number, which would be incorrect here. So even in this case, we suggest that you think of this as simplifying fractions. So dividing by a common factor, dividing by 2 is 5, and by 2 is 1. That leaves me, leaves me with, pot, with 5 times p to the fifth over 1, and I can leave that invisible denominator of 1 out. Here, dividing the numerator and the denominator by 3, I get 1 fourth. Applying the quotient rule, I have u to the eighth. So I can either write this as u to the eighth divided by four, since I have the four in the denominator, or I could write one fourth u to the eighth. It's always fine if you wanna have this invisible one here. 